Okay, here we are with our fourth or fifth segment here. I might enumerate these later. And uh, in 5A. 5A is getting into baby Christianity. What are the basics of Christianity? What is this whole idea of putting confidence? What are you putting confidence in? Your first steps. Okay? And let's continue. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant. And we greet you in the only name given. We rejoice in the in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And my sheep, they hear my voice. We are listening to his voice right now. And we are asking God to breathe on us with his breath, with his love, electricity, the force of the Holy Ghost working in you, uh, comforting you, teaching you, guiding you. There you go. Can't beat that. Now, that's it as we're listening to the voice of the Lord. Okay, that's it. One name given. Let's go into this. While we're getting started, let's listen to a little breathe on me breath of God. Let's have a little music going here. And uh, we have that fan going, which is kind of ruining things a little bit. We're going to have to go with that, okay? Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. That I may love what you do love. And do what you would do. Do what you would do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. I repeat the verses over again. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Listen, we have so much Bible study here. Uh, we're going to get into 5A. Um, I'm very happy with going over about 100 basic precepts of what is belief. What, what, is, what are we basically get, getting started with here on the first floor? Confidence, persuasion, trust, lean, high, prop, carry. I will take you to those concepts which are the first floor of Christianity. Are you ready to go? We have a lot of nice things going on here um, uh, pertaining to, we'll be teaching out of about five books at one time here, every night kind of here. And that's that's what I want to do. Every night we'll be spending 20 minutes on about four books. To the point, to the bottom line, that's Jeremiah here, okay? Especially focusing on the red letters, which I just went into with pertaining to Solomon. How, how does Solomon tie into the master, his great grandson? Because we're not supposed to listen to the great the great grandfather without listening to the great grandson. A uh, greater than Solomon is here, so we're here to focus on the red letters of life saving, soul saving, living bread. Then we look at Mr. Proverbs. Okay. I'm very happy with what I just came up with to get started, and it's a lot of work. It's, it's, a, it's a daunting situation because it's a little difficult to tie in Old Testament concepts of prosperity and blessing with the eternal life teachings of Jesus Christ, okay? The Master talks about eternal life most of the time. Solomon talks about improving your life right now most of the time. There's a little bit of a conflict there. However, it can be easily handled. It just takes work. That's what it is. There's a lot of sweat involved, okay? Paul, who said, a workman, rightly dividing the word of truth. A workman. There you go. Mental fatigue or something involved here, okay? Let's get going as we just listen to the number one hit on my Strictly Hems for you available here. You can click them. I have some high definition pictures and paintings sometimes. I just throw them out there and with additional scriptures and so forth, which is what we do here all the time. I am focused on the marriage supper here because it is basically one of the key components to your Bible. 
And the reason why it is is because that's what your Christian faith is for, for you to get to the table. You say, Jeremiah, you focus on the basics quite a bit. Well, if you don't like the basics, you came to the wrong place. I will hammer home basics most of the time here, and this year I will hammer home the basics of Psalms, Proverbs, and Isaiah, mixing around with other books at the same time. Because those are the three books that I focus on in this ministry the most. In the Old Testament, without a doubt. Those three books are what we call the enchilada. That's the big kahuna. The, the, that's the big, you know, that's, that's where everything basically starts in the Old Testament. Now, I will be going to Deuteronomy 6, 7, 8. I will go to Exodus 20. We're going to get to some very pivotal scriptures, but such as the Ten Commandments. And that's 54 in this ministry. Ten Commandments are still very huge. I, I talked to some Bible teachers recently who told me the Ten Commandments are not that significant. Basically what they were telling me, and they're, they've totally lost their minds. Uh, that is absurd. It is uh, absolutely absurd to think that the Ten Commandments are insignificant. I, I, I'm laughing because I just can't believe it. Some of the things I hear, you, you'd be surprised. I... In other words, thou shalt not murder doesn't mean anything anymore. In other words, God doesn't hate murder anymore or something. I, 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 let's let that subject go. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I guess that word means I'm, I'm in a maze. I guess I am in a maze. Let's get going. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Let's move on from the banquet here, which is cornerstone to Christianity. You want to be here. That's the point. And putting your faith in Jesus Christ is going to put you there. Now remember, we have two basic things going on here. Don't get confused. We have 5.1 and 5a. 5.1 is the basic, the basic principles of being converted. Very simple principles. I want to be saved and let's go to bed. I want to repent and be, and be baptized. I want to put my confidence in reality. I don't want to be a hippie anymore and just believe what's out there. And let me give you an example of what hippieism is and, and why America and Babylon, Babylon are confused. Babylon means confused. And let me give you an example. They used to have a poster. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an old dude. They used to have a poster that said, if it, I'm not in this world to live up to your expectations, and you're not in this world to live up to mine. If by chance we should meet each other, it would be beautiful. That's the kind of thing that people used to say back in hippie days. They still say it today, especially a lot of Democrats, you know. Everything is beautiful, baby. You know, don't worry about anything. You're, 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 you're having hate speech because you told me I can't murder somebody. Or there's a thug on TV who's shooting someone and you should like him. And you're, That's hate speech. No, I hate murder. I, 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 it's not hate speech when you hate murder. You just like murder. That's the point. You're telling me that I should like murder. I'm telling you I don't like murder. That's called war. Number 24 in this ministry. There's a war going on of ideas. And, of course, that, that uh, uh, proverb that was in the late 60s and early 70s, is, 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 it, it sounds good from the start, but if you sit and listen to it, it doesn't make any sense because what if the person you're meeting is a murderer? It's not going to be beautiful. If, if, you, if you just met Charles Manson in 1960, whatever, and he's getting ready to go murder somebody, he might murder you. And it's not going to be beautiful if you meet someone and they're minding their own business because their business might be murdering you. You're living in a fog if you think that everything's going to be beautiful if everybody kind of minds their own business. No. Their business might be to hurt you. 
Their business might be to block the gates of heaven by being a demonic witness around the corner. That's not beautiful when you met them. When they knocked on my door and told me that Jesus Christ is not Almighty God, they're trying to block me from going to heaven. So it's not beautiful. If, if these guys would play the guitar, Jimmy Hendrix, we don't, we don't want to mention names. If they're offering drugs to young people, that's not beautiful. Hey, bro, you, I'm, hey, man, I, I, I don't want to put any expectations on you, bro. When you become a Christian, you learn the expectations of God, and you learn them ASAP if you want to live forever and you want to be wise. That's just the way this is. You can call it what you want to call it, hate speech, or, or, you, or, 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 you, or you're, you're, you're a control freak, or, or you should agree with me because I want to be homosexual, or you should agree with me, whatever. All of this is Babylon, and we don't deal with it very much because we stick to the truth here. We have the truth in stone here. Now I do have some Babylon uh, concept to share with you. That's in my uh, big giant box over there of uh, popcorn. Where I have hundreds of precepts all over the place. Psychology, sociology, and, and, I, and I give you a Christian perspective on higher education. I, I haven't gotten into that much recently, but I will soon. For those of you who are considering going to college and so forth, I've already put a couple of those videos up there under Babylon. And I may, I may have to change the title so that some of the young people who are going to college and so forth, since the Lord may not come in the next couple of months here, they can have an experience in college. I want to help them out and, and show them how uh, the, the tricks of the schools and so forth. So, you, so when you go there, you have ammunition against these devils who are called professors and their students. Now, going back to, to 5A, let's get going. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Psalm chapter 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Jesus will never lift anyone's head until they bow it first. That's the whole point in a microcosm. Do you understand? It's not that hard to figure out. You agreed with reality, now you can be forgiven. You can be forgiven when you agree with reality and you confess reality. Otherwise, you'll never see God and you'll never know salvation. Because humiliation is justification in the book of Acts. In other words, you getting back in, in line, humbling yourself, confessing your true state is how you're going to get covered and cleansed. That starts the process of you being covered. For God lifting you up. It's very simple. Let's continue. So the judge of all men in the highest court, in the Supreme Court, which is probably about 12,000 miles on top of your head, right above Polaris. Polaris is at the center of the sky. It's not what they say on television uh, for, most, for the most part. A lot of people are liars about science and they're snakes. Such as the National Aeronautic and Space Association. They're, they're, they're basically a satanic association. I won't go into that right now. It doesn't mean they don't speak some truth. But for the most part, uh, I, can, I can give you a guarantee, like the barbecue salesman, I guarantee that it's basically a bunch of lies. Atomic, atomic this, atomic explosions and, and, and toy Toys being knocked over by wind, you know, by a camera, and, and you know, it's, that, that's, that's an atomic fallout and all this, all nonsense. Outer space, light years, there, there's no such thing as a light year. There, there's only one place for a light year, and that's down below in the bottomless pit. So when you're referring to light years, 
You're referring to H-E-L-L. There is no outer space. There is no light year. There is no planets. There is, all the stuff you see on TV, these people have been lying, and they've been lying for a long time. And, and when I was young, my father told me to, to, uh, to take people's opinion as an opinion and do your own investigating. And for most of my life, as an educator, library man, I found out that a lot of people are lying, and the, the, world, the world is full of liars. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. You can want them to be nice. You can see them in a suit, well-dressed, and go, that person looks awfully nice to me, Bill. They're wearing a nice suit over there. They're smiling at me. Ah, they must be nice people. That's called wrong answer. Wolves in sheep's clothing. The master warned you about that. Matthew chapter 7 and elsewhere. Correct? You have politicians coming on TV who are responsible for mass infanticide of children. We won't go into that in detail, but I will tell you they're, they're, they're guilty of it. And essentially they're covered with plasma and and it's all over them. Those people who let gang members out uh, without locking them up and they go and c commit another crime. The people who let them out, they're guilty of the blood of, the, of that situation. And they're going to be held accountable for that. They're, they're not going to put on a suit, come on TV, run up, run for office, smile, eat ice cream, and get away with it. That's the point. What comes around, goes around. And the Bible says that God reserves judgment. Oh, they're eating ice cream. They're on TV. They're smiling at you. And they're even bragging about things. You know, they, they asked one of these uh, politicians here the other day, uh, where's the money? Uh, uh, didn't you rip somebody off? Or aren't you involved in the wrong economic? Uh, uh, you know, didn't you take money a bribe? And, and the politician said, where's the money? In other words, I'm not saying I didn't do anything wrong. I'm just asking you to give me proof. In other words, you can't prove what I've done because I'm a very slick, crooked man. And I don't need faith to understand that. That's right in my face. I understand it all. There it is. But Christianity is, you need to put confidence in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now you're going to call on the name that Jesus saves, that's what it means, and now you're going to know the name. How are you going to know the name? Because you're saved yourself. That's how come you know the name. Also, you know that when you preach the gospel, you're bringing eternal life to other people, and now you know the name because you're saved, and now you know the name because they're saved. Which means Jesus saves, means God saves, saves. God is Savior. He is the wise Sagittar who worked the perfect plan for you to be forgiven by his son, legally purchasing your sins and the people of hell uh, who, who facilitated it by destroying him. By destroying him, they thought they were destroying him. No, they were destroying him, and he's saving me. Now, so you called on the name. Now you know the name. Now Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, and now you're going to glorify God by preaching what's happened to you. You, someone who doesn't deserve to be saved, is saved, and now you're going to glorify God by going out and preaching it, that God saved you, and God is glorified because His name means He saves, and you are the validation of His name. You're blowing His name up. You. And when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, which is what He does 24-7, you're also going to glorify Him. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And it's going to shine because you're going to put on character. 
you're going to be excellent where other people are not excellent. Let me give an example. I'm going to shut down. I want shorter videos now. Listen. I was working at Ford Aerospace, Lake Forest, California, Orange County. That is the southern tip of Orange County there. And I was working in a military uh, uh, factory, military industrial factory for Ford Aerospace. And I was working there. And my buddy named Mike, he, we were the two Christians who were there at the factory area there. Which was, uh, um, what was that? That was welding, deburring, and degreasing, sheet metal, and identification. That was one section of the factory, the plant there. And I worked there, and I had a, I had an area that, that was all my, it was my own. And it was a little, it was a little cubicle, and I put lots of Christian posters, posters all the way around. And Mike would come over with lunch, and we would sit there, and we would have a Bible study together. He used to belong to the Calvary Circuit, but he he switched to the Vineyard, which was a subsidiary of the Calvary Circuit in California and elsewhere. Now. Well, here's what happened. Doug came over to me one day and said, you know what? You and Mike are the only people that don't talk about everybody and threaten people. You're the only ones. I want to be like you. So now, not only were we glorifying God in our desire to be pure, but we, we, we fostered uh, another salvation by doing so. Where somebody who is troubled, uh, he was a troubled rock and roll fan. Most of rock and roll is purely demonic. Uh, I don't think he knew it was demonic. He was just listening to the music. Probably taking drugs. But I took him to church, he got saved, and he stopped wearing, I think he stopped wearing those shirts. Some of those rock and roll shirts, they have a knife in their hand, or, you know, a, a stab your relatives kind of freaky stuff, which is what they do regularly on these albums. Some of this rock and roll stuff is absolutely sickening. My toilet is cleaner, my toilet is cleaner than these people. Some of the things they put on their albums, you go to their websites, whatever. Uh, we won't go into that because I've done some research for, for a paper uh, on rock and roll and so forth. But let's set that down for now. Jeremiah, so you you and Mike were, you and Michael were having Bible study, and uh, they eventually told me to take my posters down. I had posters all over the place in that era of, of Christian posters. I remember one, one of the lead guys came over and he goes, you're going to have to take your posters down. What did I do? Cry, complain? No. I said, if the Lord has granted you authority to take these down, I'll take them down. Maybe this place isn't holy enough for the Lord, and he wants, he wants his images down. Maybe people around here don't want to do the right thing. That's the point. I'm shutting down. We went up to, boy, at least we made some ground here. We're on 24. Uh, 26, which is evangelist, which means a new angel. It means that you're a new messenger, and I'm a new messenger, and we bring salvation to people with the message of what we're going over right now. We're on 27 tomorrow, okay? For those of you who are going to go to the next video, we're going to go to evangelism. What does it mean? What's the word mean? It's very important. It is an individual who has a gift from God to bring people to Jesus Christ. Okay? That's it. Now we'll go back to 27 tomorrow, which is... You choose to expect what you're going to get. I choose to expect. That's called volition. That's volition in 
the faith. I have a choice to put confidence in reality, in truth, in that which is beneficial for me. Okay? Which is called the wisdom. The first step to wisdom, under number six in this ministry, is volition. Next is yield. And 6.3 is, are you, is you or is you not? No, that's bad. 6.3 is, are you wise or unwise? For those of you who want clarification on that even more, you can go to 6, or you can go to where I'm going. Well, I don't have it ready yet. I might put Proverbs uh, under number 6 also, and under Bible books. Because that's where we start getting into what wisdom is in detail and really start hammering home what wisdom is pertaining to salvation and the gospel of Jesus Christ. However, the word wisdom, I, I go into that with you under number six in this ministry in a, in a, in a germane di uh, dictionary fashion. It's the same thing I did in number five in this ministry. We have a dictionary kind of a perspective, and then we have a biblical dictionary perspective. And you'll notice that it's basically the same thing. It's not always the same thing. The word worship in Greek, one of the, one of the words for worship is blow a kiss. You're not going to find that in your dictionary. I get, I get, you could pretty much guarantee that, okay? Sure, mine is done. That's it. We have a 30, 26 minute. I want shorter videos. We're going to get to the point and shut down here quite a bit now. And pretty soon, most of the videos that you're going to see here, they're going to be 20 minute videos, okay? And we're going to get to the point. We're going to shut down, okay? I might even give you Psalm 1 through 20 here uh, in a 20 minute video. We're going streamline. Uh, and let me say this one more time. It's very unfortunate that we have to do this. I wish we could go slow because a lot of you are going to have difficulty comprehending this. I don't want to waste my time. But it, what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to rewind it like we used to say when I was young. We had to rewind the cassette and the, and the reel to reel. You're going to rewind it and, and, you know, click it and click it again and start it over. Because we, we, have to, we have to put a, a, a limit on videos here. There's no other way of approaching this Bible study, okay? I will go slow at times to help you, uh, but for the most part, the remainder of this ministry is going to be snap, crackle, pop. I, I'm going through a lot of concepts right now because this is some of the most important part of Christianity and learning for you is to understand the basics of what the word faith means, what the Christian faith is, which is also getting into sound doctrine, which is also getting into other other aspects of Christianity. Because the Christian faith has a lot of components to it. It has wisdom, it has sharpie, it has prophecy, it has science, it has the rapture. So that's, that's your Christian faith. However, what I'm focusing on here is the introductory aspect for the most part, okay? conceptualizing, conceptualization as to what this initiation is and what am I putting confidence in, okay? That's enough. I'm done for the day. We listen to Breathe On Me, Breath of God, a classic American hymn, and we will go through most of the classics here with you. Hymns are a big part of Christianity. I'm kind of giving you a little bit of what normal church is here. Some of you may not have access to a church, you could be under Sharia law where you can't show your face to the other Muslim men or they might kill you or torture you or something. I don't know who's listening to this video. Some of you could be in the drug cartel and you want to get out. You don't want to be involved in violence. You don't want to be involved in drugs anymore. The Lord's going to call you out. Maybe give you a plane ticket to somewhere here in the northern region of the United States where we have a lot of church going on here where you can get saved, stay saved, Stay safe and have a little bit more safe in your life. Uh, you, you can be a little more safe. Or safer is the word I'm looking for, okay? <laughs> That's the word. You can be safer. God grants people safety. However, 
You may have a testimony you can build there by going through a lot of problems. Okay? You can own a testimony, correct? What is a testimony? That means that you were you were confronted by your desires and by people around you to confront you being successful as a Christian, and you won. You won the battles. You didn't go to the bar. You didn't commit adultery. You didn't go to the demonic witness place around the corner. You didn't go to the Catholic place and kneel before a woman and call her God. You didn't do anything that, that disqualifies you from being a successful overcomer and a winner in the Christian battle. That's number 24 in this ministry. This is a war. And I train winners here in Champions. And my buddy used to say, I don't play. <laughs> That's bad grammar, but I, I always thought that was funny when he said that. You know, Homie don't play, I don't play. You know. Anyway, that's getting back into the old history of, of quasi-bonics or something. I'm done. Maranatha means Jesus is coming. That's all we talk about here all day long. Don't leave me here, Master. Uh, I love your appearing, and I love you, and I want to be with you, and I don't want to be with filthy, trashy, people anymore, which is basically what we're surrounded by here. I've had enough of trashy people. Uh, can we be around holy people, pure people, kind people, loving people? Yes, let's go. Do that. Do it. I'm, I'm all behind it. No more funerals. No more ambulances. Nothing ever again. No more children's hospital advertisements on my computer. It's horrible. No more, enough. We rejoice in that moment of the rapture. You better believe it. Let's go. That's it. That's enough. Amen to all of us. And that's it. Shalom.